Hello everyone! While watching some videos on YouTube, like about extinguishing burning magnesium with water, I wondered why the firefighters don't know that it's forbidden to extinguish magnesium that way. So then, what can be used to extinguish the burning metal, and how can it be done safely? Let's figure it out. Looking at the periodic table of chemical elements, we can see that metals are not randomly arranged. For example, there's a group of alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, transition metals, P metals, and so-called F metals, which include lanthanides and radioactive actinides, such as uranium and plutonium. The most chemically active metals, like cesium or rubidium, are on the left side of the table. I keep them in sealed vials, as they oxidize very quickly in the air. They're hardly ever used in pure form, while some less active metals are applied in science and technology, even though they can easily ignite in case of fire. One of them is an active alkali metal, lithium. Because of its reactivity, it should be stored under a layer of kerosene or oil, in which it floats due to its very low density. Moreover, this metal is quite soft, so it can be cut with a knife without applying very much force. The freshly cut lithium quickly oxidizes in the air, covering with a black layer of lithium nitride formed by the reaction with nitrogen, as well as with a white deposit of lithium oxides and hydroxides. The unoxidized surface of metallic lithium can be seen only when the metal is stored in an ampule with an argon atmosphere. In addition, lithium reacts with water, releasing flammable hydrogen. When ignited, it burns with a beautiful red color caused by lithium ions. A piece of lithium burns perfectly well in the air with a bright flame, reaching a temperature of about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It looks like welding. I think it'll be hard to extinguish this. Fun fact, burning lithium reacts with the wooden surface, drawing oxygen from the cellulose molecules that make up the wood. Because of its high reactivity and high electrical potential, lithium is widely used in modern lithium-ion batteries. Certainly, instead of using its pure form, ions of lithium are applied on carbon. Nevertheless, these batteries burn perfectly well in the air, releasing a large amount of energy. In addition, lithium foil is often used in some high-capacity batteries. If you throw this kind of foil into water, it'll easily ignite. and even shoot out hot sparks, which will be difficult to extinguish. Another alkali metal that can be often found in its pure form nowadays is magnesium. It's used for producing camera bodies, aircraft chassis, and some automobile parts. And as you can see in the video, in case of fire in those cars, magnesium parts easily ignite. And if you try to extinguish them with water, an unpleasant incident might occur. The same happened to Igor Nagoda on his YouTube channel while he was processing magnesium discs on his lathe. It only took a couple sparks for the magnesium shavings to start the fire, which was incredibly hard to put out. Well, if magnesium is so combustible, why is it still used for the production of so many things? Because of its extreme lightness and the high corrosive resistance, especially when anodized or coated with some kind of lacquer. Unlike lithium, magnesium doesn't oxidize quickly in the air. It doesn't react with water because of a strong oxide film that protects the metal from further destruction. The only disadvantage of this metal is its low melting point, after which it catches fire in the air with a burning temperature of 6300 degrees Fahrenheit. That bright flame can illuminate anything within a radius of a few meters, but it must be done very carefully. Besides magnesium and lithium, another combustible metal often used in manufacturing today is sodium. In the periodic table, it's located under lithium which means it should be more reactive and have a lower melting point and higher softness. And so it does. Unlike lithium, sodium can be easily cut with a knife and also instantly melts from the reaction with water, forming a ball darting on the water surface. Bigger chunks of sodium, though, can explode in the water, so you better not repeat this at home. When set on fire, sodium first melts into a puddle, then ignites, turning into sodium peroxide. The problem is that the obtained peroxide is an oxidizing agent, 
and when mixed with something flammable, like cookies, the resulting mixture can catch fire from any spark. Since molten sodium conducts heat very well and does not absorb neutrons, it's currently used in large quantities as a coolant in fast neutron nuclear reactors. Up to several hundred kilograms of molten sodium can circulate in one reactor, which can cause a lot of trouble when reacting with water. In addition, metallic sodium is used in modern sodium vapor lamps for street lighting, and also in the engine valves for trucks and race cars to prevent them from overheating. Another promising application of sodium is the development of sodium ion batteries to replace lithium ion batteries. They're expected to charge several times faster. These batteries will supposedly burn no worse than lithium batteries, so we also need to find a way to extinguish them safely. Of course, there's several other metals on the periodic table whose activity is even greater than the ones we've talked about like lithium or sodium, but they can hardly be found in pure form anywhere except private collections. As you can see, they're stored in sealed ampules. And did you know, rubidium and cesium easily self-ignite on a wooden surface, and once ignited, there'll most likely be nothing to extinguish. Well, after you learn more about the active metals, let's try to extinguish them with the common methods available to everyone. For the first test, I decided to use standard fire extinguishers, which can be bought in many cities. Namely, the ones with carbon dioxide and dry powder. When tested on burning gasoline, you can see how quickly they weaken the flame, eventually extinguishing it completely. I decided to test the gas extinguisher first, as carbon dioxide coming out of its nozzle does not support combustion and theoretically should easily extinguish any flame. To do this safely, I built a protective shield between me and the burning metal so I wouldn't get burnt with any accidental sparks from such a hot flame. The first metal I want to extinguish is sodium, as it's the most active metal of the three. Let's set it on fire. As you can see, due to a strong wind, sodium ignites even better than before, and then it burns with a yellow flame because of sodium ions. I douse it with carbon dioxide, but it doesn't work for some reason. It seems the combustion of sodium intensifies when exposed to carbon dioxide. Well, that's actually true. You can't use carbon dioxide fire extinguishers to put out burning sodium. Even a powerful stream of carbon dioxide failed to extinguish this metal. Can less active lithium be extinguished with carbon dioxide? After ignition, lithium slightly melts, after which it starts burning with a bright white flame, which is intensified by carbon dioxide. You can see a pile of dry ice on a tin in the plate at the bottom, but even a strong flow of carbon dioxide can't extinguish burning lithium. Hopefully magnesium won't be able to burn in such a strong stream. For the experiment, I took magnesium shavings, as most often they catch fire from a tiny spark. As you can see, magnesium also reacts perfectly with carbon dioxide. To sum it up, extinguishing burning metals with carbon dioxide is even more dangerous than not extinguishing them at all. Okay, time to check the effectiveness of standard dry powder fire extinguishers with so-called ABC powder. It's a mixture of ammonium sulfate and ammonium phosphate, which decompose at high temperatures, releasing phosphoric acid, ammonia, and ammonium bisulfate. During this process, they absorb most of the heat from the burning flame and also cut off oxygen with the resulting dust cloud. This powder is ejected from the extinguisher with pressurized carbon dioxide, so to prevent the intensification of fire with this gas, I extinguish it from some distance away. The first metal I set on fire is sodium. Then I try to put it out with a dry powder fire extinguisher. Surprisingly, even this type of extinguisher does not cope with burning sodium, and the fire remains as strong as it was before. Apparently, molten sodium, which is a good reducing agent, reacts with ammonium salts and most likely recovers sulfur and phosphorus from ammonium sulfate and phosphate. The distinctive odor of hydrogen sulfide left after extinguishing proves this point, by the way. Okay, 
Let's check if less active lithium and magnesium will react with ABC powder. First, I set these two metals on fire and used the same dry powder extinguisher as the previous test. But even in these conditions, ABC powder intensifies the combustion. In some cases, the metals even release a bunch of burning sparks that make the fire even more dangerous. Hmm. Turns out if magnesium or lithium accidentally catches fire in your garage, there's no way to extinguish it with ordinary fire extinguishers. So how can we put out a burning metal? For these tests, I created a special stand for remote extinguishing of burning metals with different substances. By pulling the rope, I can turn the bucket upside down, pouring its contents on the burning metal. To begin with, I decided to show you how not to extinguish burning metals, namely with water, for which I poured a small amount of liquid into the bucket. First, I'll try to extinguish burning sodium, as it's the most active of the metals. As you can see, it is definitely a bad idea. Sparks of burning sodium scatter everywhere, potentially setting everything around it on fire. Thankfully, the ground is wet and sodium burns quickly without causing any harm. Another interesting observation is burning sodium reacts worse with water than an ordinary piece of metal. As you can see, in this case, the sodium just explodes, so don't do this at home. Next, I'll try to douse burning lithium with water. Theoretically, this metal is less active than sodium, and the reaction should not be so violent. Huh, didn't expect that. I've never seen lithium react so vigorously with water before. Most likely due to the fact that lithium has a very small atom, three times smaller than that of sodium, the amount of energy released for the same volume of these metals when reacting with water is totally different. In fact, this is the reason why lithium is used in batteries. After all, it releases much more energy per mass unit than sodium or cesium. Finally, I decided to pour some water on burning magnesium. Well, the fire eventually went out somehow, but the extinguishing process released so much energy that it could obviously ignite any easily combustible materials nearby. After the predictable experiments with water, we can proceed with something more effective, like sand. I poured some sifted sand into a container and set a piece of sodium on fire. Actually, we can observe some progress here. As the sand managed to block the oxygen supply to sodium, thereby extinguishing the fire. From a chemical point of view, sodium doesn't react well with sand because of its low melting point. This can be proved by another experiment. Additional heating was required to initiate the reaction, resulting in the formation of pure silicon and sodium silicide. I guess we should try extinguishing a piece of burning lithium with sand, too. Yeah, this reaction was much more intense. It turns out that lithium reacts with sand perfectly well because of its higher melting point, as well as the temperature of the flame itself. Moreover, lithium, as well as sodium, tears oxygen from the molecules of silicon dioxide, the main component of sand, forming lithium oxide and silicon in a mixture with lithium silicide. Another reason why burning lithium shouldn't be extinguished with sand is silane. It's a flammable gas produced by the reaction of the above-mentioned chemical substances with water. Finally, I decided to see if burning magnesium can be extinguished with sand. Sand partially coped with this task, even though magnesium kept burning. Apparently, the amount of sand just wasn't enough. Using sand to deal with the combustion of magnesium can only make it burn more intensely. Does this mean burning metals can't be extinguished with anything? Actually, there is one solution, and that is a Class D fire extinguisher. These extinguishers contain a powder of fine salt with an anti-caking agent, pressurized with argon in a cylinder. When the valve is pressed, the fine salt is ejected under pressure and theoretically extinguishes burning metal. Unfortunately, I couldn't find one of these extinguishers on sale, so I'll try to extinguish burning metals with ordinary fine salt, which I poured into the bucket on my stand. The first metal I tried to extinguish was sodium, just like the previous test. As you can see, the salt coped with the fire perfectly well. Actually, so did the sand. 
Sodium splattered a little bit, most likely due to the fact that the salt wasn't dry. Next, I did the experiment with burning lithium. Just like sodium, ordinary table salt worked perfectly well here, except that it formed some strange substance on the edge of the lid. The truth is, lithium has a very unusual property of reducing absolutely any metals from their chlorides. In our case, it's sodium chloride. This can be shown by a simple experiment where I set lithium coated with salt on fire. When heated, lithium displaces sodium from its salt, forming lithium chloride and pure metallic sodium, or its alloy with lithium. Needless to say, this alloy can burn for a very long time. Therefore, lithium should be extinguished with a large amount of salt to cut off the oxygen supply to the newly formed metal. As for magnesium, this metal also stops burning when covered with salt. The most important thing is not to leave uncovered places like I did. Otherwise, oxygen will easily flow to magnesium and support the combustion. All in all, I advise people who work with magnesium or other combustible metals to buy a Class D fire extinguisher, or at least keep a closed bucket of dry salt on hand. Damp salt is likely to worsen the situation, as moisture from the salt can react with the burning metal. In my opinion, this extinguishing method can be applied to other active metals like calcium, strontium, and barium, since these metals can also react with sand or water during combustion. Well, I think after watching this video, you've learned how to extinguish burning metals and why it's usually a very difficult task. And if you enjoyed this video, as always, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel to see many more new and interesting things.